Welcome to the Mingo and Karen Show, the podcast. We're excited that you've chosen to explore the topic of life with us. All of us are here for a reason, so let's venture on this journey together. As a kid, you know, I grew up in the house with my grandmother and my grandfather Mm -hmm. primarily. And the first thing my granddad would say if I came in the house with this strange look on my face, he said, who hurt your feelings? Mm. And I'm like, you know, kind of had that Scooby-Doo moment, turn your head to the side like, (laughs) how do you you know that? Because I must have cared, I must have brought in the energy in the house that made him believe that somebody hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I wish I would have had somebody to tell me, don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. See, when we get into different things going on in life, no matter what arena, if you take it personal, it goes downhill real fast. Real fast. Because you feel like, oh, they picking on me. Oh, they're talking about me. Or oh, they are, they don't think I'm strong. They think I'm weak. Mm-hmm. That's taking it personal. Mm-hmm. It's easier said than done. You know how they say sticks and stones may hurt my bones? But the words will never hurt Lies. Me. It's all no, lies. No, that ain't true. That ain't true. You mm-hmm. might not let it show up in that moment, but when you get by yourself, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, mm-hmm. you're taking it personal. Yep. And as you get older, you learn the concept of, okay, I'm not going to let this affect what my task is to do here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take this personal. But even if I am, I'm old and mature enough, or I'm just mature enough to say, I can't show it. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to have that moment. So in guiding through that, learning how not to take things personal, Mm -hmm. you have to pull back and you have to assess it from a different vantage point. Mm-hmm. You got you got to rise above it. When I say rise above it, you have to, you have to break the pattern of it. Mm-hmm. You have to break that pattern of okay, this is getting out of control cuz you know how you know when you're taking something personal. You get sweaty. Yeah. You get hot. Your heart starts beating faster. Uncomfortable feeling, uneasy you, you feeling. You feel the building. Yeah. That's called taking it personal. Mm-hmm. So that's the sign. You got to recognize the sign that you're taking it personal. Yeah. And for me, um I always have had a uh, tough exterior, I think. Um, and that was because I was such a marshmallow on the inside. Uh, <laughs> so if somebody hurt my feelings, I had to be like this tough girl who didn't show you that it hurt my feelings. I, it took me a very long time, actually, um, to identify with my feelings. I would just, you know, kind of act out. And so because I would because my feelings were hurt I either you know like would become angry or or would uh have an attitude or whatever right and so understanding who hurt my feelings made me not under not realize that that hurt feeling translate uh would transfer from one situation to the next from one person to the next it could have been that person didn't do anything but because they did something that felt familiar to me that I had already experienced that hurt my feelings before, I would immediately behave in a way that was unbecoming of me. And so identifying who hurt your feelings doesn't have to do with the perpetual cycle of someone hurting your feelings. It is what is that first moment when someone hurt your feelings and you knew that it didn't feel right and you knew that maybe you were sad about it. It reminded you of something. Exactly. And the problem with that and not not knowing who hurt you at what time is as the years pass, you either hold on to that hurt like a badge of honor or you try to release it like it didn't matter. But the fact that it really happened in your life makes it still real and it makes it still relevant until you identify who it was that hurt your feelings in the first place. You know, I got a name for that. Depending on your age, that's called 30 year old baggage. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's it's that ugly luggage. Mm -hmm. Y'all have seen that ugly (laughs) luggage. You be in the, you be in the airport. They got, (laughs) they got grocery store bags. (laughs) They got that old leather. <laughs> Wait, now watch out. We had grocery store bags. We, we no, the struggle was I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, know. Just, I'm just being honest. Because sometimes things are so hurtful, you have to find humor in them. Because mm. if you don't, they'll cut you deep. Yeah. 
you'll cut yourself deeper than anybody ever can. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that. It's because the things we think about. I remember one time your dad told me, and I bring up a lot of references about your dad a lot of times because we had good talks when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I said, I don't know how to figure this situation out. I need mm -hmm. you to help me out. I said, how do you know when you are getting in the way of you? Mm -hmm. And he basically said this to me. I'm going to just give you an overall view of it. Mm -hmm. He said, when it's you talking to yourself or telling yourself something, you constantly remind yourself, mm -hmm. I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. This person hurt my feelings. This person hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. It's you constantly reminding. Mm -hmm. When it's not of goodness, mm -hmm. you have to rush into it. You, you don't think about it. You just jump in. You, there's no research. There's nothing. You just jump into mm -hmm. it. Very impulsive. So if somebody hurts your feelings, you go right into attack mode. You're in the workplace acting a slap fool. <laughs> yeah. Are you, you at home acting you feel a fool? you at church acting a fool? You feel better for those five, ten minutes. Yeah. And you don't realize that, you know, you hadn't really thought this through. Mm -hmm. But then when that path is laid out for you and it goes smoothly, mm -hmm. and everything just happens. That's of goodness. Yeah. So this is trying, I'm trying to help you identify with your hurt feelings. Mm. This is how you address it. This is, this is just a template, just a small template for something for you to think through before you do something might not necessarily do. And I think that we have to, as people who are sensitive, because that's what I'm going to, you know, I got to go out on the limb and call myself a sensitive person because on the surface I ain't sensitive. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn to identify that. Even in our uh, early years of our marriage, um, I didn't know how to say, you know, Mingo, you hurt my feelings. Yeah. I just be like, uh, attitude, like, oh, oh, okay, all right, then whatever. That's how you feel. Did it, and I got all this lip service, right? Yeah. Instead of just saying, you hurt my feelings. And but that it could have been but that something. that came from something. That came from something. Yes. And it could have been, it well, because in my mind, we love each other, right? Yeah. And so because I love you, this is going to sound so like self-serving, I think, right now. But and it's not meant to, I don't intend for it to be that way. But in my mind, if I manage to let you into my life and love you because I was very protective of my feelings because I, my feelings were hurt so much you know I always felt like I was let down disappointed you know I didn't get I mean I, was, I laughs at me because there was this one Christmas I wanted this life-size bar but this is how you hold on to just trash right and y'all think about this I ha <laughs> it's kind of silly now because I held on to this story for so many years right and I mean oh I held it like a badge of honor like because y'all didn't do this or you didn't do that so I wanted a life-size Barbie. I was so, I just knew Santa Claus, was, I had to be six or seven. I just knew. I knew it in my soul. He was going to get me my life-size Barbie. I got up on Christmas Day. <laughs> I'm one of those kids. I never slept on Christmas Eve. If I did, I promise it's going to be 30 minutes. It would drive my mama crazy because my uncles would come over. And they, my mom made cheese balls and all this kind of stuff, and they'd be playing Christmas music. And I, so I got up. It had to be like 5, 5, 30 in the morning. My mom would leave the tree on because she knew I was going to be the first one up. When I saw that box, I was like, oh, my God, Santa Claus bought me what I wanted. Yes. I opened it, and it was a bootleg, my <laughs> size Barbie. It wasn't, listen, I was a Barbie doll girl, okay? I want the real pink in cursive writing Barbie. Yeah. It was bootleg Barbie. You act like Barbie was spelled no, in graffiti. But, no, listen, you don't understand, <laughs> okay? This mattered to me. It did, it did. So when my mom got up, and I was sitting there just, the life-size Barbie, she was on the floor somewhere, and I was not feeling it. And my mom said, well, you got your life-size Barbie. And I said, but Santa Claus didn't get me Barbie. And I said, he on he, Santa Claus don't never give me what I want. And Mingo, was, when I told him the story, he was like, "You said that?" I was like, "Yeah." I I sat on Santa's lap and told Santa, "I didn't want a life size bootleg Kmart doll. I wanted 
I mean, my size. I wanted the my size Barbie, I right? Can't. I'm not laughing at you, at you. I'm laughing with you. Sure. The point is that I can remember disappointment back then. And so because I can remember that disappointment and other disappointments after, whether it was I always wanted to be a dancer. Mm-hmm. I love dance. I ha- I had to take piano classes. I could not take dance classes. You see what I'm saying? So it just became this pattern of if I wanted to do something, I only could do things like my brother was a, a football player, so I could only be a cheerleader. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, my point is that whenever I had an expectation in my adult life and somebody let me down, it went back to that feeling of Santa Claus doesn't ever give me what I want. So what you've done is you've identified your hurt. Yes. You, I mean, for me being an only child, people think being an only child is always special. The worst time to be an only child is when it's raining. <laughs> right. You've yeah. always told me that. Because you're by yourself. Yeah. You know, you may have video games, you may have TV, videos, whatever you want to look at, but nothing is like the interaction of another person. Mm. Talking to you, hearing those stories for so many years about my life size Barbie and the different hurts you felt, you helped me to identify with my own hurt. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so important about this conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the hurt comes from family members. Yes. But that's not what the point of this conversation is. Absolutely. It's about you. Yes. You were hurt. Mm -hmm. And nobody sat down and said, hey, Karen, why are you hurt? Yeah. Okay, it, it could have been an easy explanation of why you didn't get my life-size Barbie, right? Mm-hmm. But at that age, all you know is that you made a request and Santa Claus to the man yep. who was supposed to give it to you, mm-hmm. and he didn't give it to you. Yep. So, of course, your mother can go into the technicalities of it. Mm-hmm. Now that we are adults and grown and have walked a mile in her shoes, mm-hmm. we know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people know. Right. So... But that, here again, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because when you start talking about your own hurt and you start making excuses for what other people didn't do, you're still not addressing your hurt. That's right. So you have have identified your hurt and you have identified, well, this is why I act like this. Mm -hmm. So say when we got married later in life and we had a disagreement about something and it it brought you back to that feeling of not getting what you want, you go all the way back to square one. Mm -hmm. Because it was never identified. And you know what was crazy for me is that I would absolutely, when I was young, I would have a bad bad attitude and I would like cuss you out and tell you whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Then as I had started to have children, I'm like, girl, you can't be acting like that, you know? And so then what I would do is shut all the way down. And I would just go into this shell because I didn't want my kids to see who I was because I wanted to be better for them. So instead of me getting an attitude, I would just stop talking. So now what we've learned is that was wrong. It was. You was doing the wrong thing for the right reason. Yes. You, you didn't want your kids to see it, but you felt it. Yeah. But you found a way to suppress it at least long enough in front of them. Yeah. But then as you're getting older, that 30 year old baggage that hurt, it's like it's like a sword that never heals, and every time you bump it, it re-injures it. Yeah, and you have to go through the healing pr- process all over again mm-hmm. versus fully treating it, mm-hmm. fully treating it, not injuring it or scarring it or doing anything to it. Mm-hmm. So identifying hurt, how do you identify hurt? Mm-hmm. People know what hurt us. When somebody says something to you, and you feel your eyes welling up with water, now people cry for different reasons. Yes, some people are emotional Mm -hmm. some people when they which is perfectly okay some people when they get angry they cry Mm -hmm. it's just it's just an emotion yeah but if something gets you like that especially a person that's not of your blood there's some hurt there Mm -hmm. and find somebody whether you write it down whether you talk to somebody about it but let's address that hurt Mm -hmm. because what that hurt turns into it's like a bad apple. Apple apples are on, one of few things that, if you have a basket of apples and they're all beautiful, and you leave them on the table, mm-hmm. and let's say one of the kids grabbed the apple, 
thought they wanted to eat it, but dropped it by accident and bruised it. Mm -hmm. And said, you know what? I really didn't want this apple. So they put it back in the basket. Mm -hmm. That bruised apple begins to rotten. Mm -hmm. That one apple will turn that whole basket rotten mm -hmm. if you don't remove that apple mm -hmm, mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. it affects the other. Yeah. Hurt does the same thing. Yeah, that's good. If you don't identify it, one hurt turns into another hurt and you're taking it personal. Mm -hmm. And so now they're picking on you because mm -hmm. you remember when you was not heard when you were little, mm -hmm. but now you're a grown woman, mm -hmm. you're a grown man, and they ain't listening to you in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You own your own business and your employees are not listening to mm -hmm. you. You're a part of an organization in a group and you're trying to give your feedback. Are you and, at church? And they're not, and they're not even there mm -hmm. and they're not listening to you. Yes. That's that hurt from that Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think in order to be, get beyond that, you have to quickly know, Ooh, okay, this is what hurt feels like. Yeah. You have to know it so that you can decide how to navigate beyond it. It's almost like not feeling safe. Yes. You know, sometimes you could be going to your car, you could be doing anything and it's just, just a weird feeling. Mm -hmm. and like you, an uneasiness. And you pay attention to that feeling. You move a little quicker, you look around, you make a little noise, yeah. you do something. Hurt is, hurt is asking for the same thing. Yeah. You know, you're feeling yourself getting emotional. You're feeling yourself about to act out. You're feeling yourself about to set it off. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to say, oh, okay, okay, this person didn't, yeah, yeah, they hurt my feelings right then, but this this, this, this hostility I want to give out right now, oh, that's coming from a long ways back, and I'm going to give it to them. And you know, you know what, too? Taking it personal has to do with expectation. Mm-hmm. And the fact that the expectation you had or that you have didn't get met. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Because if I expect you, I expected, let's just go back to my doll, okay? Analogy, a story. I expected Santa to give me the my size Barbie. And because my expectation was here and he did not meet my expectation, I became disappointed. My feelings were hurt. I didn't understand what was going on. So what expectation are you setting? Yeah. Because when the expectation is not met, then what comes in to substitute that expectation not being met is emotion, reaction, whatever it is. So you just describe how to identify. Yes. Decide in the moment. Decide in the moment. What are you expecting? Ask yourself that question. What do I expect this to be or for that to be if I expect to come in and uh, say I wanted the bed made up because I just got a new comforter got my little pillows all this stuff and I'm rushing out of the house and I say well I'm, I'm expecting in my mind when I come back oh Mingo you know because and I talked all night about oh how beautiful the bed is now and when I come home I'm hoping that it's made up I come home and it looked like it looked when I left right I hadn't said anything to you about babe if you don't mind would you make the bed up put the pillows back whatever yeah right I just walked out with an expectation and came back to a disappointment that was actually a self-inflicted disappointment but you actually took it to the next level because you just explained because I was getting ready to ask you, mm -hmm. what do you do when your expectations are not met? Then it's not on someone else to live up to your expectation. Mm. It's on you to not lower your expectation. But the next go round, when you're not mad because they didn't live up to the first expectation. Yeah. The next time, open your mouth. Yeah. And say, this is what I would like. Hey, would you can we do X, Y, and Z? And if they still disappoint, then you've got to figure out, that's on you. If they still let you down after you 
ex- express your expect what your expectation is, mm-hmm. then you got to be able to figure out a few things. So you know what that is? What? That allowed you to get over it. Yep. You got to get over it. At some point in your life, you're going to have to make a decision to say, let's use your analogy since we on the Barbie thing. Mm-hmm. You had to make a decision. You wasn't ready in your 20s. <laughs> I was not. You wasn't ready at the beginning of your 30s. Facts. Then by mid-30s. I started working on it. You was ready to get over it. Mm-hmm. And the point, the reason I bring up the timetable is to show this is no judgment. Mm-hmm. You have to get over it when you're ready to get over it. Yes. Because getting over it requires putting in some work. Yeah. And if you're not ready to put in the work, you're not going to get over it. Mm-hmm. You're going to lie to yourself. You're going to say you're over it. And then when somebody else does something to you that brings up that feeling, mm-hmm. when they don't when they don't really you know, pay attention to what you got going on mm-hmm. or they, they do not meet your expectation or they blatantly do the opposite of what you asked them to do, mm-hmm. you go let them have it. Yeah. Because that's, that's how you were wired to think about that situation mm-hmm. because nobody sat down and said, this could have been corrected. How old were you? I had to be six or seven. This could have been corrected then. Yeah. You could have, it, it just could have been corrected then. Well, it's like, don't take me to sit on this lap. Yeah. And y'all, I'm not trying to beat the dead horse, really. I'm just saying, like, I, it, it to get over it yeah. means to say, Karen, uh, you ain't. Tap, you're tap. Not, yeah, like, you're not a young, you're not that young anymore. It's nothing you can do. And even if at six or seven years old, I wanted it, I couldn't, I can't go back and number one, I can't be that age again. And secondly, I didn't have the resources to get it myself. But also, but you also have to realize that the part in the growth in it and the building off of it is that it was about you. Mm-hmm. You had an expectation, but this expectation was different because it wasn't like the bed analogy. Because mm-hmm. the bed analogy was that you was happy about the comfort of setting the pillows that you bought and you wanted it to look a certain way when you came home, mm-hmm. but you never said that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here, when you, you were six it. or seven, you said exactly what you want and you didn't get it. So that set a precedence for your life on how you looked at things. Yeah. When you tell somebody, this is what I want, mm-hmm. and then you don't get it. Right. That's what strikes up those feelings. That's what sh- throws up those walls. Mm-hmm. That's what creates, like, these barriers in your life, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's so valuable that, you know, something as simple as a Christmas gift can affect you as an adult mm-hmm. but being able to say that i know it's a lot of us got a, a, b- a bunch of stories like that and it doesn't necessarily have to deal with christmas or gifts but i believe that everyone has experienced something the only thing that i know for sure everyone is not okay with sharing it yeah that's the only difference in people yeah and and the reason why i encourage and implore you to get over it quickly is because you waste valuable time thought and energy into something you can't change the problem with taking things so personal is that you I know for me I try to have a control that I really didn't have the problem was that I was trying to control something that was uncontrollable being what someone else was doing, what someone else was saying, how someone was behaving. That wasn't for me to determine how that should go. It was for me to determine how I could handle it, how I viewed it, how I chose to move forward in it. Getting over it is easier than hanging on to it. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, the minute that you can tell yourself get over it, that there is no power carrying this baggage with you, there is no power in it at all. It just serves to weigh you down emotionally, mentally, sometimes maybe even physically. I remember you used to tell me when we were younger, and say if I was upset about something, 
And you be like, man, go calm down and go to sleep. Because that person is not <laughs> up thinking about you like you thinking about them right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And that's that's that power. You were trying to teach me how to get over it because you had already journeyed how to get over it. Mm-hmm. And it is really simple. Mm-hmm. The way you get over it is you let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because everything that you hold negative, think about it like a box. Mm -hmm. There's only so much space in that box. Mm -hmm. But one thing about it, as you begin to take things out, it makes room. Yes. So let go that negative stuff. Mm -hmm. Forgive yourself first. Yep. Understand that this was a part of your journey. This mm-hmm. was a part of your path. Mm-hmm. Live your life. Get over it and let it go. Yeah, and and your life is more fulfilled when you do that. You have to practice it in the moment. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm over that. I'm not even dealing with it. And then when it arises again, you go back and revert to who you are. I want you to focus. Focus on who hurt your feelings first. Then I want you to identify why it's personal. And then once you've done both of those things, make sure that you get over it. You have a great life to live. You do. You have, I keep telling y'all, you got things to do. And as long as you hold on to things that drag you down and keep you down, you can't do what you were called to do in this life. You can't make the impact that you were supposed to make in this life. So stop taking things personal. Get over yourself. Get over it move forward and live the life you were meant to live this is a great time to upgrade your luggage get rid of that baggage happy relationship building happy relationship building thank you for listening to our podcast you can find us on facebook on our love is powerful stuff page and at mingo and karen on twitter and instagram happy relationship building